Hey everybody, we're back. It's time to raid my lab. But the button doesn't do anything this week because I'm trying something a little different. If you haven't seen this series before, I push a button and the computer randomly decides what we're going to talk about. And then I go around my lab and I get all that stuff and we talk about it. And it's sort of like a mailbag video with the exception that everything is on one topic. But I'm going to try just picking a topic this week. And this week's topic is ESP32. So let me know in the comments if you want me to go back to the old format, if that meant a lot to you. So one of the reasons why I love mailbag videos is that they kind of allow you to find out what's out there in the maker world. And one of the reasons why I started Raid My Lab is because it doesn't make sense for me to order all this stuff new when I already have a lot of it. So let's take a look at what is in my ESP32 bin and what I've collected from around my shop. And we'll take a look at what they are and why you would use them and why you might want to buy them. I use this term a lot, but we are living in a golden age of maker boards. We have, uh, I consider there to be five main maker boards. There's a lot of other variants and, and tons of other microcontrollers, but I would guess that the five most popular are the Arduino form factor, which comes in everything from super tiny boards all the way up to, uh, well, I got one here, the Mega. Um, these are kind of the originals that, that people, people got started with. Uh, and then there was the ESP8266, which kind of started off as more of a Wi-Fi add-on for this board, but uh, is, is many times faster and has many times more memory. And then uh, basically doubling that again, we have the ESP32. And uh, then there's a couple of other ones that you could debate whether or not they belong in the same category, but there is the BBC Microbit, developed by BBC, sort of this all-in-one board. Uh, some people will go to the cross to tell you that this doesn't belong in the group, but that's fine. It's uh, They've given them out in schools by the millions. I've given them out by the dozens. Uh, they're fantastic boards. And then you have the Raspberry Pi, which is more of a computer. Uh, but we're not here to talk about all those. We are here to talk about this, the ESP32. And uh, this is my quintessential go-to ESP32 board. These cost, they, I was paying seven, eight, nine dollars and now they're down to three or four dollars. But uh, I love this form factor because it has these pre-soldered pin headers that are usually in pretty good shape when they come in. They're almost always packed in styrofoam. And this board is 160 megahertz, which is uh, essentially 10 times faster than the standard Arduino Uno and Mega. Uh, it's got plenty of memory, has dual core, has Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, built-in temperature sensor, built-in touch sensors, and uh, this is the future. And I, I would say most of the time I program this with the Arduino IDE, but MicroPython is coming on strong. And I need to do an entire video about uh, why I believe MicroPython is the future and Python in general, but why I believe MicroPython is the future for makers. Uh, it does away with some of the things that make the Arduino C uh, very difficult for new makers. But this is my go-to, highly recommended, if you want an ESP32 board, this is the one that I usually buy. Uh, and if nothing else, it's the pre-soldered headers. I mean, when I, I like, obviously it forces me to use the wires in a certain way, but you know, when I buy something like this Wemos D1 Mini uh, ESP8266 board, I have to solder headers and that just is one more step before I can get tinkering. So this is my quintessential ESP32 and the one that I have the most of. Now, by the way, this is just a representative sample of what's around my lab. This is not the complete collection. Um, moving on is something similar. Now this one is branded as Wemos. I'm not 100% sure that it is a genuine board, but this is essentially the same board with a few less pins. You can see that there's more pins broken out on this one. And the reason for that is because a bunch of those pins are taken up by this little, uh, I believe it's an OLED screen. And, uh, and so essentially the same features as the other board with the exception of the pin headers not being soldered, which again, that's a plus or minus if you, if the pin headers are soldered, you don't have to solder them, but if they are soldered, you can't choose them. And so uh, this ESP32 is a little bit more money. I'll put the, the amount up on the screen, but having the little built-in uh, 
OLED screen is pretty sweet. It's tiny, but it's a it's a neat thing. And I haven't really used these much. I think I have one of them in one project, but I mean, I've got a whole bag of them right here. And, uh, and I, I need to put these to use in a project soon. Um, these two were uh, part of a promo contest that we did on Arduino uh, on the, the Facebook group. And this these are the particle argon and xenon. And, you know, there's something called confirmation bias. So these are, uh, these are ESP32 boards. And essentially the way this works is this one is your uh, gateway. I don't know, I believe, let me think here. I think this one is your gateway. It doesn't really matter anymore, and I'll tell you why it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because they've discontinued uh, the concept of the way these were working. So the way these have always worked is that there's been one master board, which I think is the, well, I know, because I have, let me look over here. So I have three of them. Okay, so the Xenons are sort of the daughter boards, and the Argon is your master uh, board. And so the way it would work is, they made a bet and they bet wrong. Um, the bet was that the best way to hook up a whole bunch of these sensors was to have one like this that acted as a gateway and then all the other ones would communicate over a mesh network. And they put out really quality boards and really quality software, but they bet wrong. Um, they had all kinds of problems with the uh, mesh network and getting that to take off. And I had a few issues with the mesh network over time, but um, so they have discontinued these boards and I believe they're not even talking to these boards anymore. Uh, but the bigger, the bigger issue is when you build an IOT platform, you have to decide, do you want to build on somebody else's platform? And I am a big fan of open source and I'm a big fan of owning the platform. So in other words, uh, I don't want somebody at a company like Particle who I, they are the nicest people. Like they they sponsored a contest on Arduino and they were so nice and so easy to work with. But their CEO made a decision, and to be honest, I'm not a giant fan of a CEO making a decision that affects my system. So, uh, as opposed to sending the data to their platform, I'm a big fan of sending the data to my platform. So these are four. ESP32 boards that I probably will not wind up implementing in a project and that's a shame because I had a couple of uses for them but it's just not worth putting the time into uh, developing the project. In fact, I can actually say it now. So I had several different things. One was going to be a classroom system where you would have basically a teacher board and you'd have one of these at every desk. Uh, there was another system for a restaurant for um, uh, for interactivity, let's say, where one of these would be at every single table. Uh, and so things like that are just, there's really not a major advantage to building that on something like this. Uh, this one, as you can tell, I haven't opened, but it is kind of all the rage right now, and I need to build a project on it. But this is the ESP32 cam. And so it is a full ESP32 board with some pre-soldered headers and this little camera and an SD card. And so there's a lot of people making videos about this stuff. If you ever want ESP32 tutorials, uh, there's a channel on YouTube and a blog called Random Nerd Tutorials, uh, Rui Santos from Portugal. Uh, he's the man. Like he really is. Like I would love to make content that uh, that rivals his, but if you want definitive information when it comes to ESP32 projects, uh, Rui Santos is the man. Uh, I also appreciate this one has an external antenna, which I might be able to steal an antenna from another project for this. Uh, but these are cheap. I feel like these are like three, four, seven bucks, something like that. But this is ESP32 pre-soldered headers, uh, SD card for saving your pictures. I've seen projects where you can actually take a picture and email it, which I think sounds like a very interesting concept. So this is the ESP32 cam. Uh, let's go to this one because I've had these for a while and this is another one that I, I bought a long time ago and have not implemented it. So this is an ESP32 with what appears to be more pins. Uh, a couple more pins broken out than the standard ESP32 on a much bigger board. And the reason for that is this. It has a built-in 
18650 battery holder and charging circuit and protection circuit and so you can plug in here you can turn this board on or off which is kind of nice to have a little on off switch and it can be powered from the 18650 now i've always felt like the fit and finish on these boards has been a little questionable but uh you know if you're doing a data logger project or something like that kind of a cool option and uh, esp32 has a lot of cool deep sleep features and stuff like that they're not uh, power inefficient chips but they are uh, very cool chips and so this could be a cool thing for a data logger so we're going to continue to go weirder and weirder uh, let's step up to this one. So one of my favorite companies on earth is Olimex. And uh, you can see it's got an SD card on the bottom. Uh, it didn't come with that. That's mine. Uh, one of the things that I appreciate is that they take chances. And, uh, and they go out there and build boards and sell them at affordable prices that just don't exist on the market. And so... Um, it is not uncommon to find an Ethernet shield for the Arduino, Uno, or Mega. It is not uncommon to find a, an Ethernet shield for the um, Arduino Nano. But it is nearly impossible, I'm not saying 100% impossible, but it's nearly impossible to find one for ESP8266 or ESP32 and enter this bad boy. And this has one more trick up its sleeve beyond being a an ethernet powered or an ethernet um included on an esp32 it has poe which stands for power over ethernet and this model is the iso so i don't know if you can see esp32 poe iso and so what this does is this will allow you to use a power over ethernet injector or a power over ethernet switch to both connect internet to and power the ESP32 board. And this one has the uh, additional thing of the option of being electrically isolated from the ESP32. And so uh, this one, a little bit of solder flux and stuff like that but and not as many pins uh there's there's actually some discussion about this you know th this takes up a lot of the the pins on the board and so you don't get quite as much io but you do get the built-in sd card slot and the ability to not have to have a power supply remote when you uh when you put this out there and so i use this some for prototyping but by far my favorite of the olimex boards is this one and this is the ESP32 EVB, and it has two relays that I believe are good for up to 10 amps and 250 volts. It has the same power over Ethernet. Uh, does it have the same power over Ethernet? I don't think it does, actually. This is just straight up Ethernet. Um, it has some chunky solder <laughs> there, uh, but this thing also has uh, these these little um, terminal strips for the relays. It has a CAN bus, it has external power adapter, it has external battery adapter, USB-C, uh, more GPIO, IR receiver, IR sender, uh, SD card slot, and all of this stuff built in as well as this. And I did not mention this on the other boards. I'm gonna see if I can find something to show you what that is. So this is uh, what they call the UEXT connector. And these actually can be daisy chained together, but they do things like this. You take the little ribbon cable and you can connect it to a screen. Uh, and so this is a 2.8 inch LCD screen. You can also connect it to things like RFID chips and EKGs to read uh, heart rates and all that kind of stuff. But there are a massive number of UEXT Sensors. Now, of course, you can still use the standard Arduino sensors, but you know, if you're if you're building a professional project, I use these as garage door opener controllers. So if you think about it, I mean, you have Ethernet, so you could power it over something like you can use a MQTT and stuff like that. You've got two relays to control two garage doors. You have IR so that somebody could, uh, you know, could use a little 
IR remote inside the garage to open and close. You've got CAN bus so you can hack their car while it's in there. But uh, something like this for a package for about 30 bucks is actually kind of a nice little thing. And then you can add a screen on here. And uh, so you have the ability to build a, um, I call it a low volume commercial product. Like, so you could do something like this for, uh, you know, you might be $40 in parts and send it for a hundred, uh, something like that. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's very good for both rapid prototyping and for a uh, very small scale, uh, deployment. Now the last two were in my last mailbag or one of my last mailbag videos. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about them, but this is the, uh, M5 Stick C, which is an ESP32 board, and there's a little pin out on the bottom. I can get to it. Uh, I don't want to break that. Um, let's try sliding it. I don't want to break those pins. I can I can feel that happening. But uh, you've got some GPIO over here. You've got some other interfacing over here. USB-C, a little tiny screen, and a button to interact with. There's a speaker. Uh, here's a speaker. Here is a microphone, I believe, or an environmental sensor. So you could actually take that and put this right on there. And neat little package. I don't know that I would wear it as a watch, but neat little package. ESP32, plenty of power. You can program it in M5 Stacks UI Builder. You can, or I don't know about this one, but you can program these things in uh, M5 Stacks UI Builder. You can program it in MicroPython. You can program in the Arduino IDE. Uh, lots of options, and I thought this would be kind of a fun project for the channel. And similarly, I just mentioned this, but this is the uh, ESP32 M5 Stack, and this, so Stick Stack, uh, this one has these different faces. They make all kinds of faces for these things. This is a keyboard. We have, um, calculator we have the nintendo game boy style uh thing but this this is i one of the things if you're not familiar with micropython and what i what i have this one for i've had a few of these but uh this one micropython can actually run multiple programs so you can have a whole bunch of python files essentially and choose which one you're going to run. And so I like the idea of this physical menu buttons up here where you can go, you know, up, down, select, and you can scroll through all these different Python programs and then just click the middle and run it. And, uh, and so I have some ideas for this one that I think could be very, very cool as a portable ESP32 with a screen and, um, and, uh, that I can run multiple programs on. One thing I've done with this too is a uh, little time-based QR codes. So if you think about it, this is a little uh, clear screen here and what I would do similar to how your, uh, your authenticator apps work, you can have a time-based a time QR code that you could scan and, and basically hit your API and prove that you are who you say you are. So I've, I've used it for that type of application. Not going to give you too much information there, but you can see there's GPIO pins going around the outside. Uh, you've got power and ground up here. And I actually wonder, huh? Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet you can do that too. Um, add the little speaker on here. Now this does have a speaker built in. It's a little tinny, but um, yeah. So some interesting stuff. The the ESP32 world. Is, and I forgot to mention too. This is like a little pogo pin magnetic charger. Uh, the ESP32 world is kind of where it's at in creativity. There's a lot of form factors for your old-fashioned Arduino, but when you have the extra horsepower and you have the extra RAM, you can build this and this and this and this and all these other things. And uh, so, yeah, if you don't own any ESP32s or if you don't own any of these, I hope something in this video was interesting to you. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.